and welcome to this week's episode of Build Value by Choice. I am your host, Dana Bansu. Um, I am the president and CEO of Infinite Horizons Incorporated. Our website is www.infhorizons.com. And this show's website is www.infhorizons.com forward slash podcast. Each week, uh, we bring a different expert or business owner to talk about various topics of interest to business owners, how we help business owners either grow their business, reduce their risk, increase their cash flow, or otherwise make their business more sellable, just so that they can free themselves from the day-to-day running of the business. This week, we continue the um, series of conversations that we've had with our current guest. Uh, Our guest today is Christoph, uh, Christoph Batos. Christoph is a business investor, and he, you know, he, he dabbles in both the U.S. market and also the European market, and he focuses primarily on business services uh, companies. And today's topic, we are going to be focusing specifically on how business owners can change their mindset when it comes to ways in which they can grow faster through acquisitions. And uh, Christoph is going to you know, help us just kind of talk through what are some of the things, some of the tools, the processes, and the techniques that business owners can use similar to what other big companies have used to acquire or merge with other companies. Welcome to the show, Christoph. Yeah, great to be back. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. So I, I know like the last time, one of the things that, you know, you basically in, in a way of getting uh, business owners to just kind of think broadly is, is Looking at your business, you know, there's two ways. One is that you can look at your business as the product to be acquired by a different company, right? And how they make their business more attractive. The other thing is that you really wanted to drive, you know, drive home was because we didn't get to dive into it you know, too much. The last time we spoke was, hey, uh, if you're looking to grow uh, faster, one way is to try and grow your own products and services. Another way is you can actually look to either partner or acquire um, another company. Uh, can you talk us through what what the mindset is around that? Um, you know, particularly if uh, you know if if you know business owners feel like they're not big enough to be able to afford you know, that kind of thing or be able to think uh, that broadly. And what is the method and then the process by which they can go about doing that? Yeah, sure. Okay, so. Um... At the, at the beginning, I, I, it would be great, I, I guess, to say that I am not like having courses or trainings how to buy other businesses, right? That's what I do uh, by myself. So I guess that's uh, that's uh, really important that uh, we can find find uh, different different people that do that. So uh, I'm speaking just from the experience of doing it my, by myself. So yeah, I, I, for me it was a big uh, big shift. So. When I started, I started in the sales and then go have my own business and uh, was successful in some and wasn't that successful in another. Uh, I was always trying to start a business, right? And solving everything by, by this organic growth. So do I need money? Okay, let's sell uh, to some clients. Do I need clients? Okay, let's find marketing company uh, to help me find new clients. So run around the town to try to <laughs> find somebody who will be able to pay uh, to pay me uh, money for whatever I was uh, I was uh, selling at that, uh, that particular time I, I believe uh, a lot of businesses do the same same thing if you are looking at the small and medium-sized businesses so they always and when I have discussions with the business owners that are either looking for investor uh, or they are looking to sell, if they are, if I'm looking at the processes, they are thinking uh, tactically and how to grow uh, by this organic strategy. Because if you look at the marketplace, most of the books and everything and the success stories of the business successful business owners, it's about the hustling, twelve hours a day and uh, not sleeping and selling and creating product in their garage and hustling all, all over the place. There's not a lot of resources to see like uh, how us as a small guys can do the same thing that the bigger companies uh, are doing. So before uh, before we started, we discussed how uh, Facebook bought uh, WhatsApp 
uh, not because of the profits, but they, because they wanted uh, the client, the client base, the database of, of people, so they can bring into uh, Facebook. Uh, in uh, in the past, I read the article about Apple. Uh, it's not. Uh, I don't think it's like very known fact, but they are doing a lot of really small acquisitions for a little, a very little amounts of money, and just really buy buying things that they need so uh intellectual property team and things like that and buying it rather than just building from scratch and if you look at the bigger companies uh, on the public market for example they usually have both strategies they have like organic growth and they have uh, they have the buying uh, other businesses uh, part of the thing if you look at their innovation strategies they have their own like inside uh, uh, development of new stuff but on the other side they also buy as i said apple they are buying different uh, intellectual properties uh, i think they start to buy it when they start to think about going to uh, auto uh, automatic uh, uh, automobiles right so they were starting mm-hmm. to buying technology that they need i believe we think as a small business owners that we are not able uh, we are not that big. We don't have that amount of money and things like that to be able to uh, to do that. And I believe it's it's not true. Uh, otherwise, I would be sitting here basically. And also, you don't need to necessarily buy. You can create partnerships. You can join venture. You can merge. Which, in definition of the merger, you don't need to have any money. You just put two companies together that are similar and uh, have any uh, some benefits of putting those two companies together or multiple companies like like that so it's more about the mindset and about the things uh, to look for so for example uh let's let's talk about i i know we are not talking about the startups a lot because it's not the uh, target audience but still sometimes i have uh, inquiries in terms of like hey we have this great startup and we need clients let's say uh, and we need to hire people, let's say. Uh, give us X amount of money and we will be able to do that and we will be great. And I'm just thinking about like why I would do that to give you money to do some, to get something that there is so much companies and people that already have what you need. You just need to find uh, the same uh, person that have everything you need and create a win-win structure to get it. So, uh, and usually if you have some problems, there's other companies and other business owners that have the problems that are solved by your problems. So uh, let's, let's say you have the clients, but you don't have a, another product. So let's say you are selling, I don't know, let's say uh, software, this is the easiest, easiest way. And you, will, uh, you have the clients for the software, and uh, you have a lot of clients. You are great at marketing and creating, getting new and new, new clients. There's the hardware company that is selling, ha- selling hardware, are great in having those type of stuff and are great at that and have problems that they don't have clients. So you, you need hardware products. They need clients. You just put those companies together or create the partnerships and you have access to all the resources that you need. So it's more about like the, the mindset that about how to think Uh, about the things that you need and how to get it more than about like how much money we need and things like that there's other things that could be done like you have if you have business over let's say five hundred thousand dollars one billion dollars of revenue plus you probably have some assets in the business you have some cash flow that you can leverage to buy other businesses you have some things that you are great at that you can exchange for different resources so yeah, I, and I've helped a couple of startups with the same attitude. It was like, we want to do this, but we need this and that, and we want money to build it from scratch. And I said, like, what other companies have everything that you need? And they said, like, we are creating the software for, I don't know, I don't have any examples, but we are creating softwares for a specific industry. And we need the clients and the people to be able to, uh, to make everything right and I just said like why wouldn't I buy a business that has the clients that, that the, the employees uh, the infrastructure that you need and start building the software within the business so I know I'm going all around the place but I want to uh, 
impress upon you basically uh, the mindset and the thing how how to think about these type of uh, type of things and we can discuss how to for specific businesses how to think about what things you need and what type of uh, transaction will be beneficial to you but uh, for example we have uh, i have done the this this year i have done the deal with the uh, construction company turning into being a real estate developer they raised the capital and they st- wanted to start doing uh, doing their own projects and we have uh, resources to do in two countries in europe to be able to do these type of deals and they love that i am doing a lot of stuff in the us and they say hey how we can do real estate deals in the us and i said hey we are looking to buy companies anyway with that money why not to buy a construction company in the us first to be able to then build the things by ourselves rather than hiring uh hiring contractors uh to do the work for us right so buying the infrastructure first then being able to do these type of deals uh much more easily so it's more about the the, the mindset ch- change for sure starting to think about uh about your business a little bit differently but if you make the change it was a game changer for myself personally and I've saw a lot of uh, companies uh, doing the same and change their business completely. And if we are looking at the co- uh, the valuation of the businesses, that, that's what you are focusing on, like bigger is beautiful. So because bigger companies are considered less risky. So mm-hmm. if you have, if you, we look at the valuation, if you have businesses under $5 million of profit, the valuation will be between two and four something like that depends on the business and other things that uh, uh, definitely but if it's not unique cannabis blockchain type of business <laughs> or uh SaaS business uh it will be really hard to have a uh, much higher valuation but if you have the business business that has more than five million dollars in profit the six times it's uh, probably the, the starting point so if you have one million dollar business let's find another for companies like that and sell together as a bigger business and you can get bigger valuation, right? And you can do it much quicker uh, by yourself if you want to do that, these type of things. So I know I covered a lot of stuff, but it's about the, yeah, finding the thing that could help you much, most with your business and try to find how to how to do these type of things. Yeah, so I mean, I think, uh, yeah, and and I I want to I want to kind of pull it you know piece by piece. So I, I think what what you're driving at essentially is change your mindset shift because there's a couple of things that's happening in the in the marketplace in the global environment, and what you just mentioned is the solution to a lot of it. One is we know from the uh, uh, the U.S. has a um, National Federation of Independent Business Survey that they do every month. And labor has consistently been uh, at or near the top of, you know, the top of mind uh, business owner issues. Um, Capital inflows has been, you know, has also been issues when it comes to like credit crunch, especially in minority communities. Um, You know, so talent, you know, cash flow, uh, you know, growth is always on the top of mind of of business owners. And what you're saying is, hey, uh, if you if you have a tight capital or cash flow issues and, and yeah you want to grow and expand, why not um, you know you know why not you know partner or you know in this case if you don't have a cash you can always partner with another complementary company um, to to grow right whether it's to grow into new markets or new new territories or things of that sort. If you're having labor challenges, instead of looking to hire people, whether it's full timers or, or contractors, why not partner with a company that already has the talent that you need? So in this case, if you're a small business owner, you know you can be um, you can basically partner with a startup that needs your talent, or you can uh, or if you need if you need um, the talent that you don't have, you can partner with a bigger company that has the talent that you need. That will get you around the the issues that business owners are having with attracting qualified talent, uh, both because uh, they, you know, there's not enough labor participation or for the ones that are available, the big businesses are buying them, right? So that's one way to get a, 
to get around the, the labor challenges um, you know, issue. Uh, in terms of growth, I mean, obviously, if you partner with somebody that has a new technology, then you can, you know, you can utilize that technology to give you a competitive advantage, right? Brand differentiation. Uh, just like you gave the example with, between the construction and, and the uh, real estate development company, you do that across continents, and then all of a sudden you have an expanded footprint, and also you get around the issue of infrastructure, um, you know, challenges. I think exactly. that's, a, yeah, yeah. No, that's, that, that, just, that, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just, uh, you, uh, you mentioned a good point, and uh, I wanted to, uh, yeah, to be very specific about that. So we, uh, you are talking on this channel a lot about succession planning, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, finding somebody else to run your business is a tough, uh, tough job. So if you don't want to sell, or you want to, or you are not able to sell, which sometimes usually happens, uh, especially if your expectations are uh, out of the market ranges, let's say. Uh, you can just find the similar business as yours that is run by somebody that built it from scratch and is very sophisticated in running business like yours. And you can just merge with them. And it could be somebody who is younger. Let's say somebody is watching us and they have 50, 55 more and thinking about succession planning and stop working. And you can find somebody who has, uh, who has the drive, uh, who wants to do uh, who has the, their own toy already, the business, they build the business uh, up to the certain level that may be the similar level as yours, but uh, you don't need to hire a CEO because it's super hard. All those CVs look great. Everybody is perfect until they start working, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Until the first week, yeah. uh, sometimes yeah. first day. So if you just b find somebody else, who uh, wants to grow their business and wants to work and want, uh, wants to hassle and see that they can uh, go to the next level. And there's other complementary stuff. You can just merge with them. You will, your company will be bigger. Uh, you will have less ownership for sure, but uh, I would rather own 1% of Apple than anything I own. <laughs> like sign me up, right? So uh, you need to cover cover uh, uh, your downside for sure. So you need to know how to do this tran transaction, but you can do it. So, and that's ultimate way uh, when you were talking, uh, talking about the problems with finding uh, the labor, this is the ultimate problem of fi finding the labor because it would be really hard to find somebody else to run your business uh and you can solve it that way and if uh, it's complementary product or they have a little bit different products that they sell to the, the same client base or they just build the business completely differently than yours you were you were the best in delivering the high quality products and suck at marketing and this guy is great at marketing and both companies are five let's say three million dollars of revenue one million dollars of ebit all have done it a little bit differently one guy wants to stop working. The, uh, the second guy wants to go to the next level. You have the perfect uh, perfect match to solve solve this. And there are challenges that you need to, or the risk that you need to uh, cover. That's for sure. Uh, it's not like just, uh, yeah, you need to protect yourself. Uh, but uh, I, I guess it's much easier than, uh, than finding somebody on the LinkedIn or uh, other uh yeah, HR website to try and work whether they will be good fit or not because this other guy with a different business is already proven they have done it uh, they have run it so that's uh, that's maybe the ultimate uh, labor problem that you can solve with those type of things yeah and I think that's a creative way of of of, of solving that issue that succession planning issue because. Number one, you have somebody who's proven is capable, who also has a vested interest in the in the success of the overall enterprise because they have a they have a skin in the game, right? Um, and then uh, you are able to slowly transition. You can either transition into the boardroom as a non-executive chairman, right? And then you have a in a period of transition, it's, it's much easier um, because um, you know. You know the, you you have it you know you hopefully you would, you would have established a certain relationship uh and uh, they get to understand you know the culture and i mean the culture may be different but i, I think 
uh, over the course of time, especially if you just transition it into the boardroom or even to just kind of, you know, reduce your the amount of uh, capital that you have invested in the combined company, uh, it's still a much safer, uh, you know, you, not only are you um, solving the labor challenge at the employee and associate and even management level, but you're also solving the succession plan and, and you're giving yourself a better chance of exactly, you're able to scale and you're giving yourself. So you're just kind of checking off a whole bunch of boxes there. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, and so in your perspective, when, you know, because this seems to me, these could be reasons why you may want to acquire another company, even if that company is not profitable. Now, a lot of business owners, I mean, they tend to look at the financial performance of a company, you know, first. So when does it make sense to, um, you know, to acquire a company? I mean, we talked about the Facebook acquiring WhatsApp, but Facebook, you know, had the, you know, had the platform, the, the, the money and whatnot to absorb any potential risk or, you know, they didn't necessarily, I'm right. So they are public companies, so they can just uh, issue new shares and buy it with that. So right. <laughs> it's easy to buy businesses as a public company. So yeah. you, can, you just issue new shares and uh, you print your own currency and you are the Federal Reserve basically and buying with shares. shares. So yeah. they just uh, they operate. So yeah, which is level. Yeah, it was just one of the reasons why private companies uh, they sometimes have their risk discount. So, um, so, so that um, when, when should, how should a, a business owner think, you know, think differently, um, if at all, about you know, because you know, not all profit, not all non-profitable companies are this. And when I say non-profit, I don't mean non-profits. Like you know, yeah. companies that have potential but may not be making profit yet, but yet they have certain things like a certain technology or certain talent or certain customer list. Uh, that maybe you know could complement you know your company real well. When when do you when how much weight do you give to profitability when some of those other things come into play? Uh, so I guess uh, if uh, I would always rather buy a profitable business if I want to spend money because if it's not profitable it's not worth much. So you shouldn't uh, pay much. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. basically it. Uh, but uh, your company can actually be solve, uh, be the solution for them to start being profitable. Mm -hmm. So you can create win-win deal to bring them to your uh, company that is profitable and great and doing awesome stuff, awesome, uh, awesome stuff. And maybe with the cross-selling and some other uh, things, uh, or you can buy just the assets uh, within the business so to solve uh, all the problems within the within the old business. I think like that. So you can you can find these companies and and do these type of deals with very little money. Uh, but uh, but yeah, if you want to actually spend money or need to leverage uh, assets or other opportunities, uh, it's better to buy something that uh, has profits. Uh, so you can do both. Yeah. But in terms of what uh, if you are looking for bought on acquisition, so let's you are business looking to buy another business to bought in on. On your, there's a couple of ads, uh, uh, questions that you can answer to yourself. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and you can, if you have paper right now, you can start to think about it. That would be great. So, uh, one thing is, if you are looking to grow the size, the, the like uh, revenues of the business, there's just a couple of things that you can look at. So, think about your product or service. And think about what your customers are buying before your product instead of your product during they are buying your product. So let's say you are buying car, you are definitely buying insurance, right? And after your product. And you can find whole new, new universe of uh, companies that you can potentially uh, looking to buy and acquire or create the partnerships. Uh, also, because you will find companies that have different products that you uh, you have, but they have the same client base. So you don't need to buy them. You can just approach them and say, hey, we have the same client base and we are selling completely different products. Let's do a partnerships. You will sell your, uh, your product to my client base and I will do the same. And uh, uh, each of us will get 20% of what we sell to our to different database. And you can create a lot of value like huge amounts of value by this cross-selling 
so that's great. And if uh, it were great, then you can talk about merging and then you can talk about buying. And uh, that way you can do basically the partnerships which, uh, with much bigger companies with no money. And then uh, you can make more money and uh, yeah, you will make 20% of their selling to your clients. So that's just free money. And you will make 80% of uh, selling your products to their clients. Uh, yeah, sometimes it can <laughs> get confusing, right? Mm -hmm. But I hope uh, I hope uh, we are clear. So like a cross selling to each other. So there is a lot of uh, profitability that you can you can do. So again, if you are looking to grow, I would look at what your customers are buying before, during, instead, or after they bought your product or service. So that way you can look at the other products that you can sell to your customer base, basically. Then you can look at the vertical uh, vertical stuff. Uh, so you're buying your customers or your, your suppliers. And then you can, uh, uh, sorry, that would be horizontal. Uh, that would be horizontal. So horizontal is the same businesses as yours. Mm -hmm. So basically what they're, uh, the, your company, uh, competition. Vertical <clears throat> is your customers and your suppliers. So going through the supply chain and the, the cross-selling thing. So that's a couple of things. Another is just uh, write down resources that you are missing right now. So you are missing uh, premises. You are missing employees. Are you missing uh, complementary products? That's basically what we discussed. Are you missing uh, more revenues? Are you missing... Uh, Help me out. Uh, what other uh, resources you can be missing? And I'm not thinking about resources as money. I'm talking about all the resources. And that way, I would go as far as thinking out. If you are thinking about it that way, you are solving your resource problem that is not about resource. It's about uh, lack of resourcefulness. So it's about thinking differently about how to get access to these resources. And you don't need to build it from scratch. So... Uh, yeah, just uh, I had a uh, conversation last week with one uh, business seller. He wants to sell, to have money, to use his marketing skill to go to different industry that has struggling with the marketing to install the marketing and build the uh, business in completely different industry. And I just saw, said like, you don't need to sell your business or you, you can, but let, why not to buy business within the industry and then use your expertise to solve, uh, to, uh, to solve all the problems. So that's the mindset shift. Not thinking about, okay, how much money I need to buy new locations, how to, yeah, again, again uh, as we discussed, right? If we don't buy the, uh, the construction company in the US, it will be really hard to start flying and do everything uh, and going to the US all the time, looking for the real estate deal. If we look at the building new business uh, buildings sorry we can buy just the construction companies uh and if we if we are looking for uh cash flowing properties we can look at the property management companies and if we have two companies like that in this in the one location we have the footprint and we can start looking at the land and real estate and have access to everything that we need so the same thing is is with that so the things uh i have it will be recorded, right? So if you need to, uh, I will not repeat myself again, but you can go through those things. And if you uh, if you feel or not that it's uh, it's valuable, we can write some document or article or something like that about how to think about, uh, how to think uh, resourcefully and strategically about the uh, acquisitions and partnerships and mergers that, could, uh, that you can do as a business owner to uh, make your business uh, go to the next level really quick. Like there's one deal that can solve all your challenges, all your problems and uh, grow your business to the next level. There's one deal like that somewhere. And if you look at how, man, how much businesses are selling right now, I know it's not the great news for audience that is looking to sell, but sub $5 million for sure revenue, uh, $10 million uh, revenue again. Uh, it's a complete buyer's market. There's so much businesses for sale and so much uh, so uh, little people that are looking to uh, looking to buy. 
In the US, you have a search with SBA type of loans that you can bet your house and buy a profitable business. That's uh, a lot of traction is like that. But uh, still, there is not, uh, not enough and uh, it will be uh, problems moving forward for next maybe 10 or even more years uh, as all those biz- uh, baby boomers are are looking to retire and the most small and medium-sized businesses are owned by them. So it's better to, I would just buy merch and do cross-selling until I'm big enough to not be in that uh, not so great selling scenario and uh, sell it. Or uh, yeah, we have discussed how to take up uh, that public companies are playing on different playing field basically. Uh, you can take your business public if you have, your business is over one million dollars in profit. Uh, you can do that. We we do it uh, with my partners all the time. So then you can solve another problem with the liquidity and with the succession planning and with uh, with uh, finding the right buyer because you will create your ideal buyer. You will take your business public. So yeah. Now um, in terms of cross selling, there are times when cross selling, especially for uh, business that are looking to sell, where instead, you know, I've seen situations where cross selling could actually make your business less attractive um, to a, a potential acquirer down the line. So, for instance, um, Rosetta Stone acquired this, um, you know, Spanish, um, I think, uh, some kind of biblical software company. I forget the name. And the reason why they bought it was because they wanted to expand their footprint into Germany. Uh, and that company had a footprint over there. So when that company found out that, you know, their natural acquirer was, for instance, Rosetta Stone, they just focused, instead of expanding, they just specialized. So um, the there is the question of partnering and acquiring to kind of scale, but then there's the question of uh, specializing um, so that you can, um, you can either scale by cross-selling or you can scale by specializing uh, so you can simplify it and, and you know, just not have to yeah, rely on understand. key employees. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah so that's, uh, that's, e- uh, that's easy answer to that question. Just uh, if you buy companies and or merge with companies, keep it as a separate, a separate businesses under one holding company. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, then uh, you specialize in all of them. <laughs> uh, on, uh, they are uh, selling to, to each other and everything like that. So their margins are higher. The cost of acquiring customers is super, super small. So the profitability is of the roof. The margins are uh, top notch. And if you find out that the buyer will discount you for having more products or will pay the same, you can just pin off the rest of the business and uh, sell them what they want. And you can sell and still have another business to sell. And I guess uh, that's the that's the challenge, right? Because most business owners have built their business for 30 years, even more. And now they're trying to sell the business for the first time. And it's the biggest sale of their life, uh, sell of, uh, of their life, because they will either retire or not based mm-hmm. on this transaction. So why you have uh, why you put uh, all the basket in uh, eggs in one basket and you can separate it out? So I am against uh, against like buying businesses and putting everything into one company. So it seems like a huge company. Uh, it's better to have the holding company and then smaller companies beneath that, and you can just sell the subsidiaries or some uh, some uh, uh, how it's called yeah some small parts of the business uh, that is super focused and it's even much better to buy buy uh, to manage uh, the cash flow and the, everything in the business because every single specific business has own PNL own, uh, own balance sheet so you always think about as a separate entity so separate entities will be more valuable so the whole group will be more valuable so in some areas if you are buying the competitor, Sometimes it might be beneficial to bolt it on like in the one company, but like they have built their brand, the culture, the legacy. Why do you need to put everything uh, in, 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 one, uh, in one company? It's uh, more about the ego more, more of the times, but it's not creating any shareholder value. Uh, it's much better to have different, uh, like a different companies. And if you want to sell the whole group, 
uh, sell the op option, the opportunity to merge everything together and save all those costs, but sell the vision. Don't uh, don't actually try to try to do it because that's differentiation from the corporate uh, uh, M&A type of things. When they look at the businesses on the two separate spreadsheets and they see the clients, the revenues, the cross-selling opportunities, and they see that they have two finance directors, two accountants, two, two, uh, two uh, office managers, and you can just fire half of the company and you will be much more profitable. It's terrible. Like uh, it works uh, on the corporate level because you are, they are dealing lawyers with lawyers basically and so CPAs and CPAs. On our level, the small and medium-sized businesses is much, uh, much more about the, uh, the psychology and the emotions. So I hate doing that. We always keep, if we buy the business, we always keep it as it is, as a separate entity with the same brand, same employees, and built upon the legacy that the business owner that is selling to us built. And if we have complementary other business uh, in the in the structure or in, in our holdings, we can start selling to each other and hiring each other. And then your revenue is really skyrocketing, right? Because uh, if you have everything in one place, you will do everything within one place and you will not charge for every single thing that you do. But if you have a marketing agent, for example, if you have I have marketing agency and I have three different businesses. I can sell my marketing stuff to every single business. So my marketing agency is better, bigger. And if you cross sell, you can do the same thing and things like that. So then we are going into a lot of details. And if you are looking to uh, buy other businesses, merge, making partnerships and things like that to grow, like uh, we can help you to do that. But uh, there's a lot of details that needs to go within it. But after this discussion, if you just have a little bit of mindset shift and start thinking about what resources am I missing, what, uh, how I, what uh, partnerships, uh, what uh, joint ventures, what mergers, what acquisitions I can do and think about how to solve your problems by things like that. I guess uh, that uh, this uh, episode will be super uh, super successful and then you can go to the little bit to the details of actually how to do it and how to find the right business and how to finance it and how to structure the deal and if i have under 50 percent of the ownership I, how can i protect myself that i'm not not just a passenger but i have some saying in the business we can do that and things like that so there's risk factor in that but as i say like just uh you can find within your specific industry that there is a bigger company, bigger buyer that is looking for specific companies in the certain size, probably over $10 million of revenue, most likely over $5 million of profit. So just think about how to get to that level with partnerships, uh, mergers to, and as I said before, you can find 10 different similar companies and sell to the buyer. So, and that's going back to the discussion that we discussed, right? Think about who is your ideal client, meaning your ideal buyer of your business, not uh, your marketing services, right? For example, right. or uh, bread, <laughs> whatever you are making. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I, and I, you know, the, the the thing about the resourcefulness is about your resources and not your resourcefulness. It reminds me of uh, the Tony Robbins. He used to say that a lot. It's and it's from him. Yeah, I stole that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it's, it's but, uh, but yeah, that's how to practically do it with, within the business. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, that's completely right. Uh, it's not about uh, the resources that you are missing. It's about that you didn't find a way how to get them. And in the business world, this is how you can get them by uh, much quicker than uh, building it from scratch. Yeah, and so and so they. Now, that's why business owners need to carve our time to be building these, cultivating these relationships. Uh, how much time do you think in you know, a best practice? Um, I mean, there's always a range, but best practice, because uh, you got to, you know, this takes time, this relationship building with, with, with partnerships and, and acquiring, um, you know, candidates and stuff like that. Um, you know, how much time do you think on average best practice, you know, it takes to be able to find some good ones? Oh, uh... Yeah, like like the process of, of getting them. Like you can have the deal in your phone right now. 
Yeah. You can have a you can have a, you can have a couple of your competitors in your phone or suppliers or uh, the same companies on the different continent that you can just call them and maybe you can find the deal in your phone. So it's hard because the finding the deal process it's uh, unpredictable. It could be in your phone today, or it can take you 12 months to build it. So that's hard to tell. But uh, if you find it, uh, again, it depends on the deal. If you want to buy the business with money and uh, there will be a lot of due diligence and financing. So that can take a longer period of time. But if you make a commitment, I believe you can you can uh, you can do it uh, within three to six uh, six months if you have the uh, connection already. And in terms of how much uh, you should spread your time, either running your business or uh, doing these type of transaction, we discuss it in the uh, episodes that we have done already. Uh, if you are solving problems for your clients internal and external so clients and employees you are working in the business uh, and you are working on the on the customer value and you are uh, probably the biggest assets of your business and it will be very hard to sell your business because you will have to sell yourself with it so ideally if you want to tra- make the transaction you want to make yourself absolute as much as possible with the merger or whatever strategy and then you can spend all the time looking at the deals and it goes back again to what you want to actually do right so some we discuss it as well that somebody is looking to sell and they want to still work within the business fixing cars but not taking care of the taxes and the liabilities and customers and things like that just fix the cars because that's what they love they want to spend 20 hours a week uh, uh, while they are retired, working on cars that they love, and they don't want to do that. So somebody doesn't want to do deals; they want to fix cars. So if you want to fix cars and do that, you probably it's better to find somebody else, like us or anybody else, who is do those type of deals to help you achieve the outcomes that you want to do. Right? You don't need to do everything by yourself. Uh, it's again by if you do want to be in an M and A business, basically. Uh, to do these type of transactions, uh, that's great. But if you want to be in the job of fixing cars, it's better to find somebody to, who can uh, who can do that. And that's like things that I love to do, especially because if I'm looking to buy business within some sector and it's the first acquisition, that's the hardest one. That's the hardest one uh, because uh, you don't have a you don't have a network. Uh, you don't have a track record, let's say, and you don't have things like that. So it's much better, even for me, and you don't have the resources and the opportunities for the cross-selling and during and things that we discussed. So for me, it's great to partner up with company that is looking to grow by mergers, acquisitions, and partnerships, help them achieve what they need, what they want, and just have a piece of the piece of the game and having all the resources that I need. Again, it's basically the same, right? I can either start from scratch or I can partner with somebody who wants to do these type of things that we discussed, but don't know how, how. I know how. So why would you try to start from scratch and why wouldn't I start uh, acquisition in specific industry that I don't know, I don't know anything about, but maybe it's strategic within my my, uh, ecosystem. So I would rather help other company uh, for the piece of the upside uh, to achieve what they want and they can fix cars or do operational stuff if they love them and we can uh, do the partnership that will create uh, that will solve your problems and my problems and that's how you uh, how you uh, get the resources that you need so again just about how to think about these type of things so but yeah if you want to do it by yourself uh, it will take you time to learn it and, and it's a great journey it's an exciting journey I guess that's another uh like uh, another step to an entrepreneurial level uh ladder uh, but uh, not everybody's wired that way right so uh, yeah. we all want to do different stuff and i love spending all the time working on these type of things but somebody's uh, loving to talk with the customers and solving problems by creating great marketing or fixing cars or whatever so then we will need to go back a, a bit about the personal level about what's your 
uh, passion, what's your dream deal, what's your dream uh, thing that you want to do, right? I guess we are back at Tony Robbins thing, but you need to know yeah. what you want to spend the time with, right? Uh, but if you don't want to spend time with these type of things, you can find uh, somebody who is uh, passionate about it, like myself, and uh, that will help you help you to do that. So for example, if you own a construction company in the US, we didn't bought any yet, and you want to buy more of them and buy your suppliers and, uh, and clients and subcontractors, uh reach reach out uh, to me and we can uh, find a way how to do it together so you will be faster we will be faster and we will win together and be successful together isn't it great like you we don't need to compete we we can uh, we can uh, cooperate and work together and build value for everybody involved yeah yeah it's it's about um, you know cooperation cooperation you know she creates more value i think um clayton christensen or, or somebody may have i think clayton christensen mentions that you get more value by cooperating than uh yeah i guess cooperation you know, sometimes sometimes uh, you know competition is a natural order of the day but you know, there's also value to be attained by cooperation and, and partnerships so that's great so yeah go ahead just in terms of the exit it's funny right because you are hating your competitors for 50 years and then uh, they are the only person that wants to buy you uh yeah. so that's uh funny and sad at the same time yeah so why not yeah. to uh start and this again you you will go to the networking party and you will not start to think about all your competitors but then uh, hey there is potential deals to be made so uh, it can it can free uh, free you from uh, just I think everybody do, is doing the same and trying to find a way how to how to cooperate. So yeah, yeah. and if you look at the big businesses like public companies, like look at the structure. The big business is basically a lot of small business putting to, together. Like if you look at the biggest marketing uh, companies, they are just a lot of marketing companies uh, putting in one uh, structure, one place, and they build it by acquisitions and things like that. So, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I I once worked for a credit union that you know that was their main uh, growth strategy. You know, just acquiring you know, smaller credit unions. I worked for a tech company that was also doing the same thing. So it's uh, yeah. I mean, you're right. Over time, it's just the acquisitions and the and the mergers and the conglomerates that you not know, just stop. You know. Uh, scaffolding yep. you know, each other and then before you know you have one big giant company yeah, uh, exactly well i mean okay that's great well i mean not everybody w- would want to grow i mean not everybody wants to be big but you know there's something for everybody you know you know whether or not you want to grow or not but you know it you know you may not necessarily want to grow but it may, it may help you deal with labor challenges and supply chain disruptions and and capital you know capital uh, inflow issues and stuff like yeah, exactly capital infusion and all of that so well thank you so much uh christoph this was this was really um power packed i think there's a lot of information that you shared today that should be very useful for our business owners how can uh, how can business owners who may be interested in uh you know speaking further with you how can they follow your work and get in contact with you Yes, yeah, so the best place uh, that you can even schedule a phone call with uh, with me, for example, is uh, my website. So it's uh, christofbartos.com, K-R-Y-S-T-O-F-B-A-R-T-O-S.com. And there is uh, every, every, every on the website, you see like schedule a phone call, schedule a phone call, schedule a phone call. So you will know, uh, know what to do, uh, what to do next. And there's other resources or you can email me at uh, i am uh, at uh, christophbartos.com again the same website and just uh, j- just uh, let me know what are the resources that uh, you are missing or what you want to do with your with your business and uh, we can uh, we can go from there and uh, i know from the past episode we put a lot of links into the description so based on uh, uh, where people are watching, uh, there could be another description. A uh, description uh, links in the description. Uh, so. <laughs> okay, yeah. that's great. Well, uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, again, for our listeners, you can. Um, we're going to have a lot more information in the show notes, and you can also check out the website infhorizons.com for slash podcast, where we're going to have um, this um, this show. Um, you know, also. Um, released over there as well. Um, you can also get um, on the website. You can either go to the contact us page and and try and schedule um, something with us, 
And you can also follow me on LinkedIn. Uh, just search for Nana, N-A-N-A, Bonsu1. Uh, and uh, love to hear from you. All right, till next time, bye for now.